Greetings divers, today we will be taking a look at dealing with the Illuminate retaliatory strikes. I know most people don't really like the Illuminates, even less of those enjoy playing 13 plus because they don't know how to deal with mind control, then quite a few of them are scared off by retaliatory strikes, and only the mad few will attempt to solo such missions. And to be fair, this game can be hard at times. Not everyone will be able to handle level 15, let alone complete the areas map. But for those willing to learn and improve, I'll try to provide some insight on how to handle these challenges. Now there might be some of you asking yourselves, but where's the guide for level 7, 9 or 12 missions? The short answer is that I was too lazy to go through those, and my more elaborate excuse is that you're probably attempting those missions with multiple people. Which means that there's a lot more room for different loadouts, strategies and chaos induced by your teammates which I cannot predict. I do have some general tips that may make your experience a bit less painful though. 1. Space is everything. The big difference between a normal mission and RS is that you are limited to a small arena and you can't run away when things go south. This means that generally you want to keep the map clear of stratagems that impede your freedom of movement even further, like static fields, Hellfire, barbed wire, and poorly positioned thunder barrages. This last one is more of a placement thing than anything else. Don't throw it at your enemies, but throw it in the middle of the map before they spawn, so you can circle the map and lead them into your little death zone. I would say the same goes for turrets. I don't enjoy those for RS, although positioning Tesla towers in a semicircle around you while hiding in the corner of a map with a wrap is a viable strategy. 2. Be mindful of your teammates and try to keep each other safe. Weapons like the Obliterator and Dum Dum are great against the Luminates, but during the reload you are quite vulnerable. So having someone cover your back is greatly appreciated and will help them get back in the fight faster. 3. Similar to the first tip, movement is key. Don't hide behind your teammates in that nice safe corner, because sooner rather than later that spot will be a death trap. Try to keep circling the map, focusing on clearing away so you can run past. What you're aiming for is to create kind of a whirlpool effect, where you guide the enemies to the center of the map and pick off the ones that get too close. Alright then, back to the game at hand. So why solo if I'm here expecting the people watching this to struggle with a full team? Well, multiplayer, especially with randoms, can be quite chaotic and while it's definitely easier, it's much harder to point out mistakes or explain why certain situations are dangerous. The reason I picked this one isn't because it's perfect, quite the opposite actually. This was my first attempt and I made the maximum number of allowed mistakes. Which is great, because now you'll know what to avoid. So real quick about the loadout. A shield is not just to avoid some mind control, but also great for face tanking an orb or having a bit of extra tankiness when you have to walk past a group of striders. I like the obliterator because it obliterates strider waves and is great against council members since you can reload while dodging orbs. The breaker can be exchanged for a trident, the latter being a bit more forgiving if a strider gets too close and you won't have to reload at an awkward time. I just like the breaker because it shreds obelisks, so I don't have to worry as much about those blocking my path. Again, multiplayer is a lot more forgiving for your choice of loadout, so don't limit yourself by thinking this is the exact loadout you should be using for this mission. Now for some more advanced and specific tips. Council members attacking you from the front shouldn't be too troublesome, as it's easy enough to shoot both them and the incoming orbs at the same time. Things start to get dicey once they start teleporting behind you or where the area around you starts to get saturated with dodged orbs. To avoid those situations, you want to make sure you have your back up against the wall so there is no room for them to teleport behind you and their orbs will be destroyed by hitting the wall. So here I hear striders spawning, and know that they will be blocking off my path if I don't kill them. 
I saved my obliterator rounds to make sure I can continue to move freely. Here's a small mistake on my part, where I don't move close enough to the chasm and I allow a CM to teleport behind me. Luckily, no other enemies have spawned, so I get a free escape. Something that will come with experience is proper threat assessment. While many people are afraid of council members, other enemies may prove more troublesome if you don't deal with them adequately. I'd say outcasts are the first priority, since they will get to you very quickly and can easily take you down. Strider groups are next, since they limit your movement and slowly overwhelm you. Obelisks are generally no priority, but if they threaten to block your escape route, or if you have a small break from other threats, it's a wise choice to make sure they won't screw you over at a crucial moment. While council members are formidable foes, you should be able to circle the map and let the orcs pass by or shoot them if they get too great in numbers, making them the least worrisome enemy. So here, again, we move along the edge of the map so they can't teleport. And this is the moment I knew it was fucked. CMs on one side and a large group of striders on the other. I mean, I guess I could have instantly thrown my nades at the striders, swapped to my breaker to get rid of some orbs and then power through the remaining one or two striders, but that's just a matter of how well and how fast you can analyze the situation. And I wasn't particularly focused this run.
Well, I think this is a good example of why having a wall behind you is very nice. Also, I don't know what I was thinking here, but I think I probably would have been fine if I just hugged the wall instead of trying to get through here. So yeah, keep circling. Now I'm just making sure to keep the striders on one side of the map, so I have enough free space to create distance to use my obliterator on them. So from this point on it's just repeating the same tactics, just with enemy numbers slowly increasing during the rest of the mission. I'll stop giving commentary now so you can watch the rest and figure out what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. If you spot any other mistakes or tactics that seem natural to me but could be useful for others, please leave an explanation with a timestamp in the comments.
Alright then, one last tip. You can prevent new waves of enemies from spawning by keeping more than two enemies alive. Which means that you can effectively get a free extraction. And join me walking around for another minute and best of luck on your own runs.